Hello there, my fellow Decepticons, and welcome back to some Battletech lore. At the suggestion of a subscriber, today we're gonna tackle a new type of mech and vehicle hybrid known as the Quad V. Well, maybe not so new to the lore, but definitely new to the channel. And new to myself as well, since I never actually heard about them prior to looking into it. There is also multiple models and variants of Quad Vs, which we're gonna cover today and probably in a second video as well. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us roll out, shall we? So, to begin with, what is a Quad V? Originally conceived by the clan's Hell's Horses, the Quad V, which is short for Quadruped Vehicle, is a hybrid quad battle mech which is able to change itself into a, usually, tracked combat vehicle. However, they can be fitted with wheels as well. All the Quad Vs possess a torso which acts as a turret. This has a 4-ton, 2-man cockpit and is usually the location of the unit's weapons as well. They all have conversion equipment allowing the vehicle transition from mech to combat vehicle. To overcome the intensive cross-training of two skill sets required to pilot by an LAM pilot, a Quad V has two crewmen. One serves as the unit's dedicated driver and the other as the dedicated gunner. Next, we're gonna take a look at a couple of Quad V designs, beginning with the Arian. Unfortunately, and this applies to all the Quad Vs, there's barely any pictures of them, so we might be stuck with just the default art. The Arian weighs 35 tons and is considered a light design and has a top speed of 97 km an hour. Created, as mentioned already by the clan Hell's Horses in the 3130s, their base design philosophy was to create a unit to be superior to a battle mech while avoiding the problems of a typical combat vehicle. The Arian, like all its kind, is able to thus transform from a tracked combat vehicle into a quadrupedal battle mech with a torso-like tank turret. The Arian itself was designed as a fast-moving harasser, able to use its limited array of weapons to snipe enemy units it encountered. However, due to its size and limited space, the Arian would leave warriors questioning the value of the design overall, and to some extent the value of Quad Vs as a whole. Initial appearance of a Quad V allowed the commanders of Hell's Horses to bid a Quad V as a vehicle in trials using Zelbrigan. This allowed their commanders to double their forces with mechs due to vehicle stars typically consisting of 10 units, as opposed to 5 in a mech star. Vehicles are typically deployed in pairs and two constitute a point. During the late 3130s, the Aryan was used briefly in a few battles starting on Durf in 3136 in a trial of possession against Clan Jade Falcon. Used in an all-quad-V binary with other designs of its kind, the unit, unfortunately, performed poorly. That was due to the uncertainty on how to properly use the design and not to play into the flaws inherent to it. However, it was successful in its supporting role in the Battle of Weingarten. Here, the horses successfully defended against the Dominion's second tier assault cluster, where a combined star of Aryans and Harpaguses played an effective support role. With their long-range firepower and broad firing fields, the Quad V projected damage in all directions so quickly that the second tier briefly thought it was facing two supporting stars instead of one. Rendered cautious, the attackers would slow their advance, losing valuable momentum that the remaining horses easily exploited. Unfortunately, once more, the action on Gunsberg proved less than stellar. It was there that the 2nd Freeman Artillery Cluster kept the horses off balance, hammering a vehicle star that included a couple of Aryans so badly that the Quad Vs had to prematurely break ranks, abandoning their disabled cousins as the mechs sought cover in a thick copse of nearby woods. Ironically, this tactical blunder demonstrated the advantages of the Quad Vs over vehicles at the expense of no less than six combat crews. Equipment-wise, the Ariad was designed for speed. It is powered by a 210 rated light fusion engine, which gives it a top speed of 97 kph, in either vehicle or quad mech mode. This enables it to avoid too much damage from incoming fire. Due to the size of its equipment, the Arian has quite limited room for weapons and armor protection. 
This left the designers with only two and a half tons of armor, leading to the use of ferrofibrous. Due to this low armor protection and its marginal flanking speed, this left the vehicle highly unlikely to survive a direct encounter with any heavier combat units, including even light battle mechs. Like all vehicles of its kind, the mech weaponry is concentrated in the turret-like torso, enabling it to bring these weapons to bear on any opponent from any direction. With its two-crew cockpit, the dedicated gunner can target multiple targets. The main gun is thus a Series 7K ER Lodge laser, mounted in the center torso. The secondary weapons are a couple of Type 1 cross-pattern SRM-4 launchers, one per side torso. The integrated case allows it to survive a possible ammunition explosion from its single ton of SRM reloads. Unfortunately, and ironically, I guess, all in all, the Arian is a light mech equivalent, which can be outpaced by heavy mechs and outgunned by lighter vehicles. The second of today's Squad Vs is actually and technically the first one. It is called the Boreas. The thing is much heavier at 60 tons, but only a top speed of 64 kph. Developed at the Zestreg Industriaplex Alpha Annex on Zestreg, the Boreas was indeed the first of its kind. The ability to convert from mech to vehicle form on the fly enables the Boreas to maneuver into vehicle or battle mech cubicles for transport, a very handy feature for those mixed force transports that the Hell's Horses favor. In a vehicle form, its torso and arms work just like a tank turret, and this 360 degree range of rotation is retained even while the unit operates in mech form. The more interesting ability, however, is how the conversion system gives the Boreas operators the ability to offset the effects of a damaged gyro, by simply switching from mech to vehicle mobility. This means that the Quad V can potentially shrug off one of the most crippling damages in battle mech warfare, and still return to base. While both the Boreas's cockpit positions rely on the same sensor and life support systems, their separated seats enable the crewman to focus on the separate duties of navigation and weapon control, similar to an actual vehicle crew. At the same time, this comes with the potentially greater efficiency and reaction time one could find in a single mech warrior helming a battle mech. It appears that these control systems are actually redundant as well, so the Quad V can be operated entirely by either of its crewmen should one become incapacitated. This suggests that the dual nature of the control system is actually a concession to the strict clan separation of combat field specialty, rather than an actual need for divided duties. Some reports said that the horse's leadership remained skeptical on the Quad V concept, but the Tech Factor's demonstration of it, and at least one other Quad V model, impressed the cons enough to extend further resources towards the project. This has included the conversion of an Ishtar vehicle production line at the clan's largest manufacturing complex on Zestreg, where supposedly all the other Quad Vs would be built. This level of activity has apparently piqued the Jade Falcon's attention, but whether they thought it was worth their time was anyone's guess. Equipment-wise, the Boreas utilizes a standard 240-rated fusion engine to move up to 64 km an hour, while either in vehicle or battle mech form. The vehicle is protected by 11.5 tons of armor, still giving it less than amazing armor for a clan battle mech. Built with the modularity of an Omni mech, this thing has 12 tons of pod space, giving it some flexibility over later fixed configuration quad Vs. In the prime configuration, it mounts one ER PPC, a medium pulse laser, and a Streak SRM-6 launcher with one ton of ammo. This thing also comes in several variants, including Configuration A, which is armed with just one weapon, the Class 20 Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle, with two tons of ammo. Configuration B is a long-range fire support variant, equipped with a 20-tube Streak LRM with two tons of ammo. Configuration C is another longer-range variant, attacking with its ATM-12 or closer in using the missile launcher in concert with its ER medium lasers, two of them to be precise. This one also has 3 tons of ammo for the ATM. Finally, configuration D is a very heat burden variant, 
as it mounts two heavy large lasers in either side of its turret-like torso. Four extra heat sinks are added as well, although it doesn't say if they're double strength or not. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this bizarre contraption known as a Quad V for today. I wonder if anyone in the inner sphere would be actually interested in them. Also, as I said at the beginning, this was not the only episode I'll make on them, as there's at least three more designs I wanted to describe. And I'm not certain about the pronunciation of any of them yet. They are the Silaros, the Harpagos, and the Notos, and you're gonna see them quite soon. All that being said, what are your thoughts on the Quad V? A reasonable concept, or a ridiculous pointless death trap? I look forward to your opinions in the comments below. If you found this entertaining or informative, do leave a like, share, and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and have an awesome and healthy day.